Good morning. Welcome to our home and uh, welcome to the service for St Mark's and St Andrew's for this Sunday, which is the third in Easter according to the Church's calendar. I suppose that uh, over the past uh, few weeks of the lockdown, we've become used to looking at uh, politicians and their bookshelves and seeing what books they've been reading. And we all now know um, where um, Mr Hunt uh, keeps his uh, cycle helmet and that Mick Jagger has some rather mediocre paintings on his walls. You can perhaps just see behind me now, as well as the Rogues Gallery of Grandchildren, um, the uh, bottom of a painting that uh, was done by this uh, rather splendid lady uh, called uh, Diana Rowe Kendall. And uh, I've got a picture of it uh, in a book here that you'll be able to see more easily. It's the picture of uh, Jesus seated with the two disciples that are going to be the subject of uh, our story about the journey on the Emmaus Road. And uh, the thing that I like about it is that um, unlike some of the other paintings that have tried to show what that scene might have been like, it's Jesus uh, sitting there at somebody's kitchen table and the Two people are presumably a uh, man and wife, a uh, um, married couple. And as he breaks the bread, they recognise that they're in the presence of the risen Jesus. Of course, that wasn't the end of the story. They were so excited that they went back to Jerusalem to share the good news uh, with all the rest of the disciples even though it was late and it was a nasty, long journey. But that's what they did. They went back and said, the Lord has risen and we've seen him. And so I thought this morning we would uh, start our worship by using that uh, traditional Christian greeting uh, for the Easter period. The Lord has risen with the response, he has risen indeed. So although it might seem a bit strange sitting in your living room doing this, you're doing it along with a lot of other people. Uh, so let's say, the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Well, we're going to sing together now. Uh, our first song is, Lord, I lift your name on high. So glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us You came from heaven to earth To show the way From the earth to the cross My debt to pay From the cross to the grave From the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name Sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us You came from heaven to earth Earth to show the way from the earth 
Now we're going to pray together. First of all, um, I'm going to lead you in a short prayer, uh, reflecting on the experience of uh, those two disciples and upon our experience. Then we're going to say together a confession. And after the absolution, we'll say together the collect for the day. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we know that like those uh, disciples so many years ago, we often forget that you have promised to be with us wherever we are, even to the end of the age. Sometimes we forget that you are with us wherever we are. We confess that like them, we often fail to see you in the scriptures. And we confess that like them, we fail to see you in the ordinary affairs of everyday life. We're sorry for our blindness and our disobedience. And so now we pray together. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who, with heartfelt repentance and true faith, turn to him. Have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the collect for the day. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. There are one or two things that you might like to uh, follow up that are linked with the story. Um, one is that uh, on the website, and you can download it, um, there's a sort of puzzle, this one here, um, and uh, there are the names of 16 uh, books from the Bible hidden away in a little story. Also for families to do together or for children to do on their own, um, there are these uh, worksheets that... Um, have got all sorts of different activities and uh, discussion and so on on uh, look pretty interesting to me and uh, you can download those uh, from the website also there's a reflection on the story of the Emmaus Road um, and ties it up with uh, our human experience of uh, loss and grief and um, you might like to have a look at that. It's a sort of meditation on the story and uh, how it might apply to us um, if we're facing particular sadness at this time. Well, when the uh, two disciples uh, spoke to one another about their experience of seeing the risen Jesus, they said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us on the road? And we're going to sing our uh, next song, um, which is uh, Consuming Fire. Um, you may be more familiar with it um, by the uh, refrain, There Must Be More Than This. Let's sing that together. There must be more 
Veronica is going to bring us now our reading of that story that we've already thought a little bit about and was featured in the picture. The Gospel reading is from St Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some woman of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them, the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? While he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told them what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of bread. 
This is the word of the Lord. Now, uh, Diane is going to preach to us on that familiar story of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. We're continuing the events of Easter today. Last week's story of Thomas came from the Gospel of John. Today we're looking at part of Luke's account of Jesus' resurrection. So far, Luke's told us the story of the crucifixion, Jesus' body being buried, and the women have gone to the tomb to anoint it with spices. They found the body gone and been told by the angels that Jesus has risen from the dead. Peter's gone to see the empty tomb and returned home, amazed at what has happened. And so we come to the events in today's reading, the two on the road to Emmaus. The theologian Tom Wright describes it as the finest scene Luke ever sketched, both a wonderful, unique, spellbinding tale, and also a model of what being a Christian from that day to this is all about. So let's look at the story. It's Easter morning and Cleopas and his companion, who may have been his wife, are leaving Jerusalem. For them, Jerusalem's a place of pain, sorrow and loss. It's a place of death, unmet expectations and disappointment. It's a place where their lives were shattered. As they walked, they're talking about all the things that had happened, and I suspect all the I suspect all the things that didn't happen. They're talking about Jesus' arrest, torture, crucifixion, and death. They're talking about hope that didn't materialise, expectations that were unmet, investments that paid no return. They're disappointed and sad. They regarded Jesus as a prophet, and more than a prophet. God's power had been with him in his miracles and his teaching, and they couldn't doubt that this was the man of God's choice, the Messiah they'd been waiting for, the one who would redeem Israel. How they hoped that Israel would be redeemed, that God would purchase her freedom, just as he redeemed them from slavery in Egypt at the first Passover. That's why the crucifixion was so devastating. It wasn't just that Jesus had been the bearer of their hopes and he was now dead and gone. It was sharper than that. If Jesus had been the one to redeem Israel, he should have defeated the pagans, not dying in their hands. Clear past puzzled statement, they crucified him, but we'd hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel would become, they crucified him, and that was how he redeemed Israel. But they didn't understand that yet. They'd hoped that Jesus was the one, but he's dead. And there's part of them that's been lost, a part of them that died with Jesus. They'd heard rumors that he was alive, but it all sounded like an idle tale. Their lives had been shattered. I'm sure many, if not all of us, have felt like that at times in our lives. Times when we felt life has given us more than we can handle. When we've been deeply disappointed, lived with unmet expectations, felt lost, as if our world had been turned upside down. Can you remember a time when you did everything right and life still didn't work out the way you planned or wanted? When you've grieved the death of a dream, a future, the death of a loved one? When you've wrestled with the big questions, who am I? What's next? Where do I go? What do I do? Questions that seem particularly poignant for many at this time when everything is so uncertain. 
Has your life ever been shattered? If so, you know what it's like to be Cleopas and his companion. The two companions were discussing all that had happened together. And we do that with others too. And it's helpful and good. But it's never enough. What we need is fellowship with the living Christ. And that was what these two, two needed now. And the Saviour himself comes alongside them. It's never a matter of his presence, but of our awareness of his presence. He's with us, even when we don't realise it. As they walked along, they're joined by a stranger. Cleopas, Cleopas must have thought at first that he might be a spy. It must have taken a certain amount of courage although perhaps by this time he was beyond caring to reveal that the two of them were part of Jesus' following. The stranger didn't seem to know what had happened in Jerusalem during the Passover time, so they told him the story. But then an extraordinary thing happens. Their new companion begins a highly detailed scripture lesson. He takes them right back into the narratives they know so well, the stories of their scriptures. What for us is the Old Testament? Of course, there would be a moment when God would raise up a Messiah to lead his people out of slavery and into the long promised freedom in the land that was theirs. But have they read the text carefully? What kind of person would he be? Would he be a successful soldier? Or do the scriptures suggest a rather more complex picture of a leader chosen by God who might have to take the failings of his people on his own shoulders? They, like everyone else in Israel, had been reading the Bible through the wrong end of the telescope. They'd been seeing it as the long story of how God would redeem Israel from suffering. Whereas it was the story of how God would redeem Israel and hence the world through suffering. In particular, the suffering that he would take upon himself. When Luke says Jesus interpreted to them all the things about himself throughout the Bible, it doesn't mean that Jesus took some isolated text, verses chosen at random. He means the whole story of the Old Testament, as it points the way to Jesus, and for us too. And for us too, reading the Old Testament, we need to see it, not just as a collection of stories that show how God dealt with his chosen people Israel, but as pointing to Jesus, his son, whose death and resurrection was to redeem us as well as Israel. The fact that they didn't recognise Jesus may have been to some difference in his bodily appearance, as found in resurrection appearances in other Gospels. But here, it seems to have gone with the fact that they couldn't recognise the events that had just happened as the story of God's redemption. It's important for us to read the Bible, but it can become all too easy for us to read it superficially, to think we know what it says. Each time we read it, we need to ask the risen Lord himself to teach us, praying for his presence and guidance and listening for his fresh interpretations as he walks with us. Jesus goes on so long that he's still expounding the text when they reach the village. Night's falling and it seems inhospitable not to invite them in. Anyway, what he said has made them think a uh, second thoughts as to what happened in Jerusalem. So they asked him to stay. Then as the meal begins, they invite their remarkable guest to say the blessing. He takes the bread, 
blesses it and breaks it. And in a flash, they tumble to who he is. Suddenly, all the pieces of the jigsaw fall into place, and they know that the person who's walked beside them is the same Jesus who had broken bread like at the Last Supper. The first meal in the Bible, when Eve saw the forbidden fruit, Genesis 3 says, she took some and ate it. She gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. The story was told over and over as the beginning of the woes that had come upon the human race. Death itself was traced to that moment of rebellion. The whole creation was subjected to decay, futility and sorrow. But here in Luke 24, we have the first meal in the new creation. Verse 30, she took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Jesus himself is the beginning and sign of this new world, death defeated. Jesus had told them to go on breaking bread in that way, to recapture that sense of intimacy, and it became the central symbolic action of Jesus' people. Though Jesus was no longer with them, they were to discover him living with them and in them through this meal. When they'd seen his body broken on the cross, Cleopas and his companion had thought it was all over, but it wasn't. He'd walked with them and they must tell the others at once. I don't know about you, but I've been going for walks, although some of them have been longer than I planned when I got lost. But they've not been anywhere like seven miles, let alone 14. But Cleopas and his companion got up without thought for their empty stomachs or aching feet and set off back to Jerusalem to find the disciples and tell them what they'd experienced. How they'd walked with Jesus but failed to recognise him because they were so preoccupied with their own sense of loss. How he taught them the true meaning of the mission and how he'd reinforced his promise to be present in the breaking of bread. As we remember this story of the two on the road to Emmaus, let's remember that we are not alone as we ask the big questions of life. As we grieve our losses, Jesus walks alongside us and is there for us, bringing his understanding, comfort and peace. As we read the Bible, Let's read it afresh each time, open to what God has to say to us today, asking him to speak to us so that our hearts burn within us in such a way that we have to tell others. Andy is going to close this time of worship with communion. Let's know that as we remember him and what he did for us in this way, Jesus will make himself known to us as he promised. Even though this is a strange way of doing it, let's look and listen to him. Sarah is going to lead us in our prayers this morning. Heavenly Father, at this Easter time, we thank and praise you that you have given us a living hope by your resurrection, Jesus Christ from the dead. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Help us in this time of restraint to open our eyes afresh at your creation, either looking out through a window or walking outside. Father, help us to take our time as we look and walk with you. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray for our political leaders that they may be guided and strengthened in wise counsel. May your Holy Spirit give them the discernment to make the right judgment in these unprecedented times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick. Give your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work, many will be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful and to surround the isolated with our love and your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our families, for those who are distressed, for those we cannot hug. Comfort them and us with your peace and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to remember that we are Easter people. Jesus has risen from the dead, and by his Holy Spirit, he is alive in each one of us, sharing his risen life with us, and we are free to live with him forever and ever. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Before we come to the uh, breaking of bread in our service this morning, which uh, Andy is going to lead, we're going to sing Amazing Grace. We're going to be singing the version that uh, has the chorus, My chains are gone, I've been set free.
Well, it's lovely to be able to add my welcome to you as well this morning and thank you for joining us for our worship uh, as we will be concluding our service now with a celebration of Holy Communion. And we do extend a welcome to you to join in our celebration and remembrance of Jesus' death and resurrection for us, which won uh, for us forgiveness and eternal life uh, and is so special to us. Jesus invites us to break bread in remembrance of him. And so I do invite you to join us in this this morning uh, with your own bread and your own wine or equivalent at home. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died and had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, giving it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us into your loving arms and bring us with Mark and Andrew and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We join together in the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.
Thank you for being with us this morning. Just a heads up on a couple of things. Uh, we're just thinking a little bit about the charities around us that are in need uh, financially. And uh, we're thinking of making a donation from church uh, to support some of those charities and also to encourage individuals uh, to do so. Uh, do get in touch with the office in this coming week. If you're aware of a local charity or, or need that uh, would really be blessed uh, by an extra donation at this time. Uh, and also, uh, we are talking to Salisbury Food Bank about what resources they particularly need at the moment, uh, with view to holding a collection uh, which uh, we could uh, bring together uh, on a Sunday um, uh, outside our two churches uh, and invite other people to come in and uh, to also contribute towards those uh, donations. Uh, which obviously would be to the outside of the building in our porches. Uh, so look out for news about that uh, next week uh, as well. And also, we would love to find out what it's uh, like for you at home at the moment, or at work, or at school, if you're doing those things at home. Uh, send us a few words uh, to uh, news at uh, stmarksandandrew.org, uh, or make a little 10 second video uh, of a snapshot picture of what it's like for you at the moment uh, to be a uh, being church, uh, to be working um, or a family life at the moment in the middle of this lockdown. We want to encourage one another, specifically with some of those questions that are in the news sheet uh, this week. Uh, but it'd be great to see your picture uh, if you can take a little video for us uh, and we'll share that at the start of next week's service. Thank you so much again for being with us this morning. Do join us. Uh, before you head outside to enjoy the rest of the day uh, in our Zoom uh, chat room uh, to have uh, coffee uh, and conversation uh, before we go our own ways this morning. Thanks very much. God bless. See you next week.